Good morning, boys and girls. Sam Rayburn Reservoir. Uh, playing with props on the on the new four-stroke. So the motor came with a 23-pitch three-blade Fury. And uh, talking to Cliff uh, at Texas Boat World, he's been talking to several guys around the country or that he knows that are running this motor. And most are saying in these big, heavier boats. Now, I'm, I'm so remember, I'm in a Ranger Z521C. It's a big boat. Uh, it's not a go fast boat, as I've talked about in some of my comments on some of my videos in the past. I run this boat because it's the most comfortable boat to fish out of. I fish Rayburn and Toledo. Those of you around the country who don't know Rayburn, it's 120,000 acres. There's a number of places here where the wind can blow straight at you for 14 or 15 miles uninterrupted. It gets rough. So there's a lot more days when I am just trying to run down the lake and, and get where I'm going than, I, than it's glassy slick. And, and well, today's a perfect example, it's windy. So I, I bought a big boat. I think it's, if not the best made boat, one of the best made boats there is. Uh, I personally think it's the best made boat. Uh, and it's a boat that holds its resale value like none others. There's just a whole group of guys. I mean, look how many Ranger owner pages are on Facebook where I'm probably going to post this. So, uh, or one of the places I'll post this. So it's a it's a big boat. It is not a go fast boat. If I wanted to go fast boat, I'd run a Bass Cat or a Bullet or an Allison or a or a Gambler, one of those things. But that's not what I'm about. Uh, I want a big, comfortable boat that's easy to fish out of. So. It's not a fast boat. The 24 pitch three blade Fury. By the way, if you haven't tried to beat the hub out of one of these things, it is not easy to do. It took us a while yesterday, but we got it out. So the three blade Fury yesterday morning under less than ideal conditions, uh, the 23 pitch, which is what the motor came with, I got 71.5 out of it uh, going down the lake over there with a little bit of tailwind. So I had a nice little tailwind, about three quarters of a tank of gas. Uh, this morning, I just made that first pass in this boat. Okay, I know it's windy. Let's check the whole shot here. So we're running, uh, we're 57% full of fuel, three blade fury, 24 pitch prop. Here we go. four pitch three blade fury and on that pass I touched 72 either two or seven I, I was bouncing around a little bit but I believe it touched 72 two which is really fast coming back into the one win uh, we ran I ran at 69 seven so I'm 55 percent full of fuel you saw the hole shot over there it doesn't jump out of the hole uh, like the 23 pitch but it's certainly an acceptable hole shot it's not bad um, so uh, my sense is, and by the way, so it was turning that, so it's, uh, it's got to be 85, 90 degrees out there, really high humidity conditions motors do not like. Uh, to run in 72 miles an hour, and it was turning 5,880 RPMs. So you guys who want to do your slip calculator on the Mercury website can do that. Uh, that's pretty well hooking them. Now I am far from tournament loaded. I've got my tackle in here. Live wells are empty, gas tank was not full, and there wasn't another big guy sitting over there. So, uh, but tournament loaded, I think that boat with this prop is probably still pushing 70 miles an hour, probably high 60s, um, which is faster than my prior boat, which was a shorter boat, smaller boat with a two-stroke on it. So I'm excited. I think this is going to be a, a, a fast motor. And for those of you who don't get on the water that much, um, I'll give you a great example of this. So I talked to a guy at the ramp last weekend. We were talking about the motor. He was in a Phoenix 
which is known to be a pretty fast boat, and uh, running a two-stroke uh, Mercury. And I asked him, I said, how fast is your boat? He goes, well, 73.7. And I thought, as a lot of guys do, I thought, wow, that's, that, or maybe he said 74, I think he said. And I said, that's pretty fast. I said, today? And he goes, oh, no. He goes, that was back in January or February with just me and a half a tank of gas. So huge discrepancy. My prior boat, fastest it ever ran, was right there with 73.7. I mean, not just then, but right that same stretch of water. Uh, this early, early, early this year, January, February, it was really cold. It was in the 20s or 30s. There was basically no wind, maybe a tiny bit of tailwind, not much gas. And uh, the two-stroke was pushing at 73.7. Other side of that coin, uh, in a Costa tournament this year, I had a pushing 300-pound co-angler, live wells full, gas tanks full, and it would run 64.5. So there's a huge discrepancy in speed on these boats based upon load. But just my two cents based on that run, uh, I think this motor is certainly faster than the two-stroke. It's not, I think, it is. It's faster than the two-stroke. Uh, it sounds great. I think the fuel mileage based upon everything I've looked at is pretty similar. But uh, I am excited and I just love the sound of it. I love this. <laughs> Somebody pulled up next to me the other day and he says, man, it sounds like when they crank the NASCARs. So I'm going to fill the live well and uh, we'll make, a, I want to get a whole shot feel as close as I can get it without another guy in it uh, to turn the condition. So let's fill the live well and let's see how it feels. Uh, jumping it up on pad and uh, we'll make the same pass down. It's going to be downwind and upwind, but with the live wells full. So we'll put another probably 100, 150 pounds of water in here. Let's see how it runs. So let's do that real quick and uh, I'll be back to you in a minute. So something I neglected to mention in my last video. Uh, so I was talking to my buddy yesterday who runs a Triton with a two-stroke. and we, It's a fast boat. It's a big boat, but it's a fast boat. And he made the comment that uh, I, we were talking about, so this motor, you can run it up 6,200 RPMs. I guess you call that the rev limiter. His is 6,000. It's a two-stroke. And I asked him how many he was turning, and he said about 6,700. And I said, so see, it won't run that fast. And he said, actually, when it's cold out, he can run it that fast. It'll pick up another 300-ish RPMs. So my thoughts on that are, with this motor, uh, I, I'm, with the 24 pitch, I'm turning at 60, uh, 5,800, I think I said 58, 50 or 58, 50, uh, 5880. I think if it cools off out here, uh, this motor picks up another, gosh, 5% on RPMs and another 5% on speed, which is putting this boat somewhere in the mid 70s. Uh, you know, again, ideal load, not, not tournament loaded. So uh, we're now tournament loaded, almost. Uh, by the way, at the end of this video, you got to stick around and watch something that uh, Cliff showed me. It's a, it's a product that he carries that I'll have installed on my boat soon for battery issues. Look, I don't have a battery sponsor, but and I've got my jumper box back there, which is awesome. I think it's a great thing that Ranger adds to these boats. But we're running a ton of electronics. I'm running three. A lot of guys are running four big hummingbirds. And these things suck power basically almost like a laptop or maybe more than a laptop, I honestly don't know. But you run all three graphs all day and don't move around very much with your live wells running and you will burn up these batteries. He's got an awesome, cool, incredibly inexpensive product that you gotta see. So stick around for that. All right, so we are live wells full, four blade, 24 pitch fury. And let's see how much whole shot we're going to give up with that little bit of extra speed. Uh, not ideal tournament low, but we'll give you that in just a second. Here we go. There ain't nothing wrong with that whole shot right there. At all. Okay, so uh, you saw that. that. So that's a live well full. A uh, whole shot was absolutely acceptable one actually what I would call a good hole shot um, and I ran it we ran 70.5 I didn't have as much room to make a full run it was a little more speed in it it probably lost a mile mile and a half uh, with a full live well so uh, again I'm still thinking the 24 is going to be the pitch, pitch <laughs> the correct pitch for this motor uh, in the summertime I'm, I'm already 
when it gets cold, this thing will turn to 25. There's no doubt in my mind uh, it'll it'll at least turn to 25. So uh, I've got a 25. It's a little dinged up. I'm probably going to get that worked. And uh, I think we're in business. I think this is going to be fast. So we're going to load uh, uh, 100 pounds of girl, a little more, and 100 pounds plus of dog. We'll leave the live wells full, and we'll get the whole shot coming out of here for you with what I would consider a tournament load other than not full of gas. And uh, let's just see how that does. So let me get everybody loaded up here and we'll uh, we'll give you another whole shot right quick. Okay, so we're, we're gonna check the whole shot on this 24 pitch and we're what I would consider real close to a tournament load. So we've got another person and then we added to that 100 pounds of dogs uh, and then we're live wells full. We're uh, right at just over a half a tank of gas. So let's get our stuff. Let's, uh, let's check the whole shot here. Hey guys, Ken Smith, KenSmithFishing.com. So every once in a while, I see something where I go, yeah, how come I didn't think of that? So those of us that have uh, new Ranger boats, Ranger puts a, uh, a jump system in them because your batteries run down every once in a while. But uh, I'm down here at Texas Boat World with Cliff Brown, and Cliff has shown me something that I've never seen before. And what's interesting is this is a product that a lot of bass pros are using, BASS pros, and he's named names for me standing here, uh, one of which used it on national TV. But what's interesting is most of them don't want to talk about it because they have battery sponsors. And the last thing you want to do when you have a battery sponsor is talk about when your battery runs down. So I'm going to show you all this and show you where to get it. Uh, for any of us that don't have, any of you guys who don't have a jump system like comes in the newer Rangers, uh, and I got to tell you, after having seen it, even with my jump system, next time my boat's down here, I'm going to have Cliff install one of these in it because you can do it from the dash. So check this out. This is a really cool piece of equipment right here. Hey, this is Cliff. So Cliff, tell Howdy us folks. what we got here. What we got is Tournament Saver Pro is a push button jumper system, hooks to your trolling motor batteries and your starting battery. And as you can see on this little LED display, our starting battery is completely dead. And I've got a mercury starter on here to uh, illustrate trying to start your, your big motor, which requires about 1100 cranking amps. And as you can see, there's nothing happening. I mean, it is dead as a doorknob. It is dead. I've got 36 volts on my trolling motor batteries. This is my voltage it's going to be coming over to my cranking battery so let's talk about that real quick so what you've done is you've got a cable from the system to just one of the batteries right yes yes and it's labeled connect to the trolling motor battery and you want to hook it up to just one battery negative and positive on one battery don't cross them up because then you'll be sending more than 20 or 12 volts to the starter so basically this is something that a guy that got a degree in finance from the university of arkansas could install correct oh yes he could install it and uh, the instructions that are in the box my wife actually and maggie wrote those and they can install them so if they can do it it's easy and it's wow. really simple all you got to do is find a location in the back of the boat and it's a little tiny system yeah That's it's it. a small box it weighs less than three pounds uh you find a location mount the box connect two wires to the uh, cranking battery, two wires to the uh, trolling motor battery, and then we've got this uh, LED, or this little um, push button switch that you just run. It's got 25 foot of cable, so you can run it up the gunnel of any boat. So this can be a, a big boat. boat, yeah. It can go on a bay boat as well. And all you gotta do for this thing is push this button, watch it pull the power off of the batteries, and light this LED up. Right. So now it's distributed that power, and I've got cranking amps on this on this battery here Show now. Me. That was completely dead. That's crazy. So the, what I like about this, and the reason I'm gonna put one in my boat is, now I don't have to go to the back, flip open the, the box, and, and flip my switch. It, exactly, and a good thing about this is it's only engaged when the button's pushed. On your boat, on the Ranger boats, if you turn that switch to jump, and go back and start it and if you don't go back there now you're you're still pulling off all those batteries onto that onto that battery i didn't uh, think about that battery. yeah yep on this thing here it's real quick if you're if your batteries are dead and you're fishing a dam and it's windy and you're about ready to blow in the end of the rocks all you do is push this and start it that quick and you're done 
so much easier getting in the back of the boat. That is way cool. So uh, you guys will install these here, right? Yes, sir, we do. And it's about an hour labor to install. So it's nothing to it. But nothing to it. <laughs> truly, you can install it yourself. Yes, anybody can install it that's got any kind of uh, mechanical ability. So I, I was guessing at the price on this thing, and I guessed wrong. So tell us what you got these priced at. We're selling at. them right now for $99, and then we charge $99 to install them. Okay. But, but you can install them. Guy can do it himself yes. easy. Yep. Guys, I think that is wicked cool. So one more quick story. Tell me about the guy who lost his alternator. Well, we had a guy that lost his alternator and his boat wouldn't stay running because once you get it started, then it runs off the alternator. Even if the battery's dead, the alternator should have enough power. We had a guy that ran, was running in a tournament. He held the button down the whole way back to the weigh-in, which kept the power coming off his trolling motor batteries and kept his motor running. Every time he'd let go of the battery or the switch, the battery would go dead and the, and the motor would shut off because there was no power on it. That's crazy. Tell me the website again. It's uh, www.tournamentsaverpro.com. Tournamentsaverpro.com. Yes, That's the whole system right there, guys. That's really cool. Uh, I'm glad you showed me that, and we'll get one in my boat next time we're down here. All right. Sounds All right. good. Thanks, man.